Good morning and welcome back to part 13 of themes from Orota Tshuva of Rav Avram Yitzchak HaKalin Cook. As usual, our learning is dedicated to the Rafua Shalema, the speedy recovery of Shimona Bas Daniela. We mentioned last time that there was this theme of Ratzon Hashem. Ratzon Hashem is the will that permeates all of our lives, all of our thoughts, all of our motivations and kochot and strengths, and permeates the entire world. Rav Kook develops this idea that there is a central harmony, that there is a, a, a frequency with which the world is in harmony, the world's in sync, and everything clicks and everything makes sense. And when you're in sync with God's harmony, when you're in sync with that song, everything is flowing, everything makes sense, everything feels right. Even when bad things happen, it feels like it makes sense, it's in sync. It's when we're not in harmony with Ratzon Hashem that everything's wrong, that everybody's wrong, that everybody's out to get me, and that the Yisurin, the troubles that I go through, which are part of the life that I live, they seem to validate the heresy, the heretical idea that maybe God's not in charge. Because if I'm not in sync, if the wavelengths are off, all of a sudden, I doubt the Ratzon Hashem. I doubt that there is a central will of God. And this is what happens when we sin. When we rebel, when we change, when we deviate from the course of the Torah and from our rabbis, our tradition, harmony is set off. We are not hearing the tune. We're off key. It's like trying to sing a song with someone who has the proper pitch and the proper tone and the proper volume. And you're just not happening. It's not connecting at all. And you try to hear those two voices together and it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. When the radio frequency is off, we are off. And it creates, what Rav Kook describes, a vicious cycle. A ma'agel chozer, nefila mechalisha tritzono, ha'chulsha ratzonit, mevia la'arafel, hadea, vehi shuv gorevet al-chusha nosefet shel ratzon. For when I make mistakes and I'm off key and I'm off the harmony from Hashem's way, I continue to see a world that doesn't have God. And then I continue to make mistakes. Same chatayim that pulled me further and further away. In a desperate claim to try to recapture that truth, but I find myself increasingly offbeat until I'm in a place where there is no recognizable signs of Ratzon Hashem anymore. And then my world becomes darker and darker, and my world is a place that's devoid without Hashem. So the goal of tshuva is la shiva adam et avud mimenu, to restore lost man from mankind to return back to the harmony that was destroyed. There's a song by a songwriter named Michal Shapiro. Uh, recently, some of the songs were uh, arranged, put together by Shlomo Katz and others, some beautiful melodies. And one of the songs uh, that they have on the album is a song called Return Home. In the song Return Home, it's a song about tshuva. And there's a lyric that I want to share with you. The lyric goes, and on the way back home, the soul rejoices deeply. Creation sings in joy as she returns to harmony. The idea is that all of creation, all of the world, when we sin, is set off balance, and now everything is skewed. Everything in the world doesn't make sense anymore. I shared a story this past Shabbos in my uh, shul that uh, the other day I pulled up to my home and I saw that my wife's van was a little bit off kilter. It was about a foot and a half over the imaginary line, the center of a driveway, which made it very cumbersome and difficult to pull in and out of the driveway. So I decided, I, would I say something? Would I not say something to my wife? I fought the eight Sahara. I didn't say anything. I said, I'm going to hold it in. It's okay. It's not a big deal. As the day went on, three or four times, I'm pulling my car in and out of the driveway, and her van is still a foot and a half over the line. Each time it's building up, each time the tension, I'm getting angrier and angrier. And finally, by the end of the day, I decide I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to defeat the Sahara. I'm going to have a private little victory lap in my own mind. And at the end of the day, my wife and I are driving out to go to a wedding, and she has to enter my car. And she's just going to have to see now how tough it is to squeeze in, to open the door partially, squeeze into the spot. She'll realize what she did by parking over the line, and I will be vindicated, and I won't have to be the bad guy. I won't have to say a single word. Anyway, as this is happening, she turns over to me, and she, she says in the softest voice, 
Shanan, next time you borrow my minivan, would you mind parking a little bit further to the right so you could squeeze your car in to the right location? Turns out that I didn't park her car there, that she didn't park her car there, I parked her car there. I was the one who was wrong. But when we see, when we make a mistake, we see an imbalance in the universe and we blame everyone else. The whole world is off kilter. The reality is we're the ones who are offbeat. We're the ones who can't sing with the proper tune. Rav Kook explains finally in Musar Kodesh that when we are off, when we finally get back to the Rikus, the focus of proper Musar, of proper conduct, all of a sudden, everything else clicks in place. And therefore, there's an idea. The idea is that when we do tshuva, zidonos nasus locus echuyos, that even the things we did on purpose, even the things we did willingly and violated God's precepts on purpose, after tshuva, those become accidental. We realize that we never meant any harm. We never meant to corrupt our own ways. We never meant to hurt someone else. It was all because there was a, there was a lack of harmony. We didn't hear the Ratzon Hashem reverberating in our ears properly. And that's why when you do tshuva, you're not allowed to negate everything that was passed in your life and reject it and say, well, I was clearly an evil person. You're supposed to find the merit within your demerits. You're supposed to find the areas where you went off and then look behind the layers of that sin and see the zechuyos. See what was good inside of that person. Reish Lakish does tshuva famously and as he repents, he's able to become a master in the base medrash and he's able to master the laws that pertain even to his previous life. He knows the laws of how you prepare a weapon and make it into a full kli, when it's makabal toma or not, because he was a person who wielded weapons in a former life. He didn't negate his whole history. He found things that were essential to his personality, and he brought them back into harmony. The Balchuva doesn't reject everything they were. The Balchuva finds who they are at their heart and connects that back to Hashem.